Dungeons and Discords. Dungeons and Discords. Yes, English is my first language, I think. Uh, no, your first language is Lux. <laughs> and you try to preserve it for cultural reasons. Uh, yes, yes I do. Hello, I'm Lux, as stated previously. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 17, Dungeons and Discords. You know, I haven't laughed this much at an episode in, like, a while. <laughs> I really enjoy Discord episodes. I really do. There are times where it's bad. It's kind of like Spike, but nowhere near as often. But this one was good. Especially the whole Dungeons and Dragons theme. Boys Night Out. Boys Night In, you mean? <laughs> good point, but Discord was trying to do the latter, or former, or however you use those. As stated previously, English apparently is not my first language. <laughs> as we've been previously privy to based on your speaking patterns. <laughs> but yeah, he tried to make it a Boys Night Out, and everyone else was like, no, we want to play... Dungeons or God, I can't remember. Ogres and Obliettes. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not even gonna attempt to say that right now because I know I'll butcher it. Like apparently, I'm butchering the English language in this conversation we're having here. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, to quote a Mercedes Lackey's novel, the English language wasn't killed; it was drawn and quartered, <laughs> <laughs> only to be resurrected in the next chapter. <laughs> That's slightly off. It was much longer than that, but you get the gist. Yeah, this was a fun episode. Lots of good expressions from everyone, specifically Fluttershy. There was that great eye raise moment when she was like, Discord. <laughs> uh, or eyebrow goes down. I can't remember which. I just know I've seen GIFs of both directions. <laughs> yes, well, it's nice to see Fluttershy continuing to stand firm. Mm -hmm. Especially with Discord. <laughs> I also love how he's, like, begging to go with her. He's like, please, can I go? <laughs> and this whole episode is about him learning how not to look down on people. <laughs> mm, slightly goes both ways because uh, Big Mac and Spike only invited him because they felt sorry for him. Mm -hmm. And this episode was just full of great moments and stuff like that. It's just every time Discord did something and... Uh, I knew I should have watched it again before I did this recording because I'm actually not remembering them clearly enough to actually describe them. <laughs> um, you mean like his game of charades and the zoop suit and the cabana? Yes, I remember those more clearly now. Thank you, Ember. <laughs> <sighs> so there's the cabana scene, which I think may have been... Uh, referencing the movie The Mask. It could have also been just referencing, especially with the way his suit looked, it could also be referencing Warner Brothers cartoons, because that reminded me of the scene where a wolf, I believe, goes into one of those things and starts whistling and stuff like that at a very pretty performer. Yes, so there's those episodes. There's also a Tom and Jerry episode where Tom gets a zoop suit and gets the girl because of it. And it's a nice way to date Discord and point out again how much older he is. Because I very much doubt that that is a current fashion in the Equestria universe. Yep. And speaking of going out like that, I also like when they go back how he's like, you know, the town's not going to paint itself red. <laughs> <laughs> and I do like how he um, is like, now, he's not just looking down on them, he's also looking down on the game they're playing, because he's like, that's got, for kids? What? This is, you use your imagination? I don't need my imagination. I can create things out of thin air. Why would you think that would be fun to me? <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, part of the point of the episode was for Discord to get involved and try something he hasn't done before. But in this instance, it seems very one-sided because Discord's pushing for them to go out and Big Mac and Spike are like, no, we want to stay in. So they don't give his night out a chance and he doesn't give their game much of a chance. 
Yeah, though I think the game also rubs him the wrong way because of the fact that it has rules, and he's lived his entire existence without rules until recently. Yeah, the very spirit of chaos. So trying something and failing and, you know, not being able to do magic. When has Discord ever not been able to do magic? Except for the period of time he was trapped as a statue. Yeah, and that time the magic was sucked out of him by Tyrick. So, yeah, Discord's not used to feeling powerless, but this is optional powerlessness. You know, it's a chance to roleplay and explore and be something or someone different. I mean, if he wanted to have magic, he should have stuck with the mage class instead of just going, okay, I'll take Archer because it sounds just as bad as everything else. Mm hmm. Uh, though I gotta say, Spike is a pretty good DM because he let Discord basically mess up because one of the rules of being a good dm is never say no to your players unless it's absolutely impossible <laughs> like okay you want to try to cast that spell but you don't have enough for it you can try it's going to be a difficult roll and if they try and succeed then something cool happens and if they fail it becomes a funny moment or the person fails <laughs> yes but see that's another thing discord is not used to being on the other side of humorous situations. He's used to causing them and pranking people not being on the receiving end. So a little bit of difficulty for him in differentiating. No, they're not laughing at him. They're laughing at the scenario that happened in the game. Mm hmm Just because the scenario happens to involve your character doesn't mean it's reflecting on you. Yeah, the whole point is that your character is different than you. Notice that Spike's character, he must have made that character up before he saved the Crystal Empire. Because that's basically how he's treated in the Crystal Empire. Oh, I'd like to point out a technical difference between D&D &D and this game. And most role-playing games that involve dice, it seems like in this game the DM does all the dice rolling. The players themselves don't do any rolling. Well, if Discord had been allowed to roll the dice, he would have won. <laughs> Not just that, I think it's maybe because, like, I think it would be kind of hard for Big Mac to roll some dice. <laughs> you know, hooves and all. <laughs> yes, but ponies managed to do a great deal of things just with hooves. Recall that Twilight Sparkle's Star Swirl the Bearded Cosplay costume from, let's see, was that Luna Eclipsed? She states that it was hoof-stitched. That's amazing stuff right there. <laughs> so... I know we both enjoyed the episode, but do you have any nitpicks? Though that's probably a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> do I have any nitpicks? That's like asking if the sky looks blue during the day. I don't know. It looks kind of gray right now. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> uh, a little vexed with how condescending all of them were to each other. And I mean, it was two against one with Spike and Big Mac versus Discord. But at the same dis time, Discord is the Lord of Chaos, so he's kind of OP compared to them. And love Discord's, you know, basically fourth wall breaking of your side characters. I'm a main character. We don't hang out. <laughs> like, yeah, but dude, you were being totally pathetic. And if you really wanted to go along with Fluttershy, you could have just taken the train yourself, or, I don't know, instantly transported yourself to Yak Yakistan. I think this also shows something interesting, that he's becoming dependent on Fluttershy. She was the first friend that he made, and the time that he spent with the other members of the main six, Twilight excluded, was partially in order to harm Twilight, so it wasn't done out of a true spirit of friendship. Just like when he invited the Smooths to be his plus one at the gala, mm -hmm. it wasn't done out of a true sense of friendship. And going back into, I'm just gonna call it D and D to simplify things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Going back into the D and D stuff they were playing, uh. Would be kind of neat to experience that, but Discord happened to do the classic, Oh no, the holodeck's malfunctioning! Everything's deadly! <laughs> Which is really even more funny if you think about it now that you say it, considering who his voice actor is. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> so yeah, like they're like, this is so cool. We're in the thing, and then this is not cool. Pain, pain, not cool. <laughs> uh, then once they become friends, they're like, um, could you do that again, except make it less deadly? <laughs> you know, just a little peril instead of a lot of peril. Nope, no peril. We're totally not doing the next line. <laughs> And very nice costume design for Lord of the Rings movie references since Discord was basically Legolas and Spike was Gandalf. And I don't know the movies well enough. Would you classify Big Mac as the warrior or as the dwarven warrior? Because that was a mighty big sword he was carrying. I don't know. I don't think Spike and... Big Mac were actually referencing Lord of the Rings. It was only Discord. I think they were just referencing other classes. Like, Big Mac was obviously a fighter, but I think he was a darker fighter, maybe a berserker. I don't know. Of course, you know, Spike's a wizard. Yeah, Spike is obviously a wizard. <laughs> uh, speaking of classes, I'm still trying to figure out what exactly Rainbow Dash was. Was she a thief? Was she an assassin? Was she a rogue? Which is kind of a mixture of the two, but... <laughs> My initial thought was rogue, and then when you brought up thief and assassin, I threw out assassin because this is MLP, and I thought thief might suit her better because we have actually seen her commit theft before. I only say assassins because it reminds me a lot of the way they designed the outfits for Assassin's Creed. And of course, Pinkie Pie is most likely a bard. <laughs> a stat boost with song. Yeah, that pretty much fits Pinkie Pie to a T for this universe, and I love how they jumped in. I also love how Twilight was like, uh, let's just leave them to whatever this is, because it's not going to appeal to everyone. So once again, we have the whole lesson of not everybody has to like the same thing. Mm hmm Though, I was actually kind of like, huh, I thought Twilight would kind of be into that. You know, it requires book reading, she might even be a DM. <laughs> Yeah, she might be into the actual game, but when you do the alternate reality like that, you didn't exactly see Spike, Big Mac, and Discord doing any uh, savings throws. They were just fighting. And Twilight gets plenty of that on her own with her friends as the defenders of Equestria. Uh, as usual with the Discord episode, tons of references. It's been a long time since I watched Disney's animated Alice in Wonderland all the way through, but I believe his entrance to the castle was very much uh, the Queen's introduction. Minus the basketball thing. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure who that was a reference to. Take your pick of almost any basketball star and it probably fits, though I'm sure for people who follow the sport, they could pick out a specific athlete. And that just really set the tone for how Discord felt about this, that he was, you know, gracing them with his presence and making their lives better by deigning to be around them. Oh, yep, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Of course, he wasn't at all interested in coming until it was guys' night, and then he's like, okay, June, cancel my plans. <laughs> Like, oh, is that a specific show reference or is that just an overall reference to annoying, macho, overbearing boss types? I think it's the general of overbearing boss types and uh, those scenes in the office where are like, cancel all my plans, I have something important to do. Yes. When he called the non-existent uh, assistant June, it made me think of Julie from Korra. <laughs> Julie, do the thing! <laughs> Ah, uh, I love that series. You need to finish watching it sometime. Yeah, as soon as I magically have some free time... Quick, let me call Discord. <laughs> that won't exactly create free time, because I'm sure he and I will be up to something, and... Actually, Discord and I should never get near each other. The, the world will be safer that way. <laughs> I liked how when Discord made the game world, he still kept everything as a cardboard cutout. So you still had that it wasn't real real. 
And that also probably helped us um, get past the sensors on violence levels. Because if they looked like real skull ponies and real squid wizard monster things, that would could have been incredibly violent. But now it's just l low budget, limited animation fun. Mm-hmm. Yes, and there's uh, speaking of the censoring, there's always like, oh, they're always robots, or they're not humans, they're aliens, and they don't bleed, of course. And if they do bleed, it's sparks or green or. <laughs> That's actually a thing on the censoring in this country. You cannot have bodily fluids come out of people. This includes spit. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, huh? <laughs> yeah, you you can show blood, but you can't show bleeding. Mm hmm And if the character does bleed, it can't be red. It has to be a different color. <laughs> Odd things. I'm not even going to get into the sensory in other countries. Whoosh! <laughs> No, especially considering we're talking about an American show right now, that's a little bit too far of a tangent. I also love Discord's slip on calling Sparity Rarity when he's saying, Then I'll make Rarity my bride! <laughs> when he was playing as the squid wizard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you brought up that art style, I really did like that art style for the imaginary world, how they were cardboard cutouts and everything like that. That was a nice touch. Yeah, well, it matched what was on the game board, so it was really nice and how even, like, the arrows were on sticks and pictures of arrows falling towards them. I like how Discord was the GM for a little bit, and he goes, you have to roll a savings throw, basically. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I was just thinking, I wonder if this actually references the Dungeons & Dragons TV show that they had at any point. I didn't pick up on it because it's been forever since I've watched that cartoon. Um, no. <laughs> none of the right weapons, none of the right character archetypes, the villains didn't match, landscape didn't match, we didn't have the dungeon master showing up at the beginning of the episode with cryptic messages that the team only figures out later. <laughs> the only thing it had in common was that we had a unicorn, because Big Mac's character was a unicorn. Hmm, I wonder if this says anything about Big Mac's personality or his frustrations or anything. The fact that he dreams about being an alicorn, he's a unicorn in the Dungeons & Dragons game. Does that mean he secretly wants to or wishes he could be a unicorn? Or is envious of the things that unicorns can do? Because he's a very strong and capable earth pony. Mm-hmm. But each type of pony's skills lie in a different area. But at the same time, he's never seemed less than happy, but he's so stoic, how could we tell? Mm, oh, and that reminds me of another uh, line that made it funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can pull it off correctly, but it's something about Spike and his monosyllabic friend. <laughs> yes, Spike and Applejack's monosyllabic um, brother. <laughs> That made me laugh so hard. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, it's because monos yeah, that word I can't say right now is a funny word in that context. <laughs> oh, also, John Delancey did such a nice job of voice acting this episode. <laughs> so I'm guessing you either have more or we could wrap things up. Well, let's go back more towards the beginning of the episode because we haven't even talked about the alternate universe that... Discord briefly conjured up where everything was opposite and <laughs> Fluttershy got to yell at Discord. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Also, oh my god, she's going to be gone for one night. Your tea parties are not sleepovers. So you're not losing that much time with Fluttershy. Mm -hmm. Seriously. I also like how he just folds up the tea set and puts it in uh, his shirt. Or chest, or... yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you weren't thirsty anyways. There's no reason you couldn't have drank it before you put it away. You couldn't be there drinking tea and talking with Fluttershy while she finishes packing. Mm-hmm. Or have a tea thing just before she leaves, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's always thermoses, so you could actually drink some on the way down. You know, because you do have magic, so you could float the cup in front of her. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Especially with Discord, there's infinite possibilities. <laughs> yes, and I can't believe that Big Mac and Spike 
didn't at least say yes to those frosty chocolate beverages. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Like, well, coming from Discord. <laughs> A point, but still. You already invited him over. You're already living dangerously. <laughs> yeah, they're living on the edge. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure entirely how I feel about the whole guys' night dynamic. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a guys' night. Especially in a world that seems to be mostly dominated by females. Yes. The thing to me more was... The main six seemed almost patronizing of their little hobby. Mm-hmm. Especially since they already knew what they were doing and it seemed funny. Yes, which is highly inappropriate for a show about friendship and is really not nice to be that way about your friends. We've had how many lessons in this series of how it's okay for everyone to like different things. It's not like they're hurting anyone by playing this game. So how is that any worse than, you know, Rarity sewing dresses or Twilight reorganizing her books? Multiple times in a single day. Sometimes that's necessary. <laughs> Depends on how you classify your subcategories. <laughs> Do we organize this alphabetically? Do we decimal or by color? <laughs> Not by color. Uh, unless it was a book on the rainbows. Each chapter doing a different color. <laughs> you should say each volume doing a different color. Yes, but then would you organize those books by the colors as they appear in the rainbow? Or would you name the, organize them alphabetically by what letter the color starts with? Or would you organize it by your most favorite to least favorite color. <laughs> and this is why I love our conversations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, pulling the tangent back a little bit, we've already had episodes where people make fun of other people's hobbies and get over it. So I don't see why the girls have to be so condescending of the boy's hobby. Because if we took that and gender swapped it and made it girls night, that would be like, oh, you girls and your girls night and your pedicures and your spa treatments. Yeah, say it that way, it sounds highly offensive. Mm -hmm. Cough, double standard cough. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was very disappointed in that action as taken by the main six and the overall portrayal of in the episode that this is something that you cannot do or be openly. That you will be scorned and made fun of. I'm pretty sure Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash would have played the game anyways. Because they do seem like people who would play Dungeons and Dragons. Or tabletop games, period. Yes. I could see Pinkie Pie more because she would be like a chaotic neutral bard. Just all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> Rainbow Dash might get caught up in the adventure of it, but I think only after she became a fan of the Daring Do series. You know, at the point where she understood that not physically doing a fun or hazardous activity still has merit and entertainment value. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, I also see Twilight doing it, but yeah, I think she'd be more of a DM, though she might not be the best DM because I think she might be a rule Nazi. <laughs> Uh, Twilight would definitely be a rule Nazi, so she would be a very by-the-book DM, and not necessarily a fun DM to play under. Mm-hmm. Huh. So any other points you want to go over? I think that about covers it. Even with editing, we've probably lost most of the audience by now. <laughs> uh, well... I said I haven't laughed this much at an MLP episode in a while. It was a really fun episode. I enjoyed this Discord episode. It did not feel repetitive to me because it felt like a different lesson for Discord this time. And the characters' interactions were nice. The making Dungeons and Dragons real was nice. Also, the this is this is bad, pain bad. <laughs> also, could you could we do that again, except with a little less peril? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love Discord's comment of, 
oh, isn't this what gamers always want? To be inside the game? <laughs> like, no, that's only what we think we want. <laughs> we want a holodeck where the system won't break and kill us. And trap us and hurt us and... We don't always want that immersive of an experience because we don't want our emotions played with like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is why it's fun watching other people play horror games in virtual reality, but not actually play those games in virtual reality. <laughs> so, your final thoughts? Really enjoyed the episode. I had nitpicks. When do I not? <laughs> but this would be on my higher end for... Season 6, it was definitely a different lesson for Discord. Big Mac and Spike got to learn something too. It's nice to be seeing Spike more and during that time being pretty well written. Or, you know, feels well written to me. You know, that's something that's very subjective. I also liked how in the whispering back and forth we could only hear Spike. We could not hear Big Mac. I hope his voice actor gets to voice a lot of other characters because he cannot be pulling much for Big Mac. <laughs> uh, I think he's usually listed as some of the voice uh, acting for the background characters, and he's done some other characters in other episodes where you're like, that, that was him? And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 17, Dungeons and Discords. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, I have a Patreon. I also have commissions. Please check link for commission availability.